All right, welcome back to Yahoo Finance Live. Miles Ovin here in New York and looking at stocks that are higher on this Wednesday morning. We have talked a lot on this program and probably will into the new year about SPACs. And one company that is now uh, trading on the public market after undergoing a SPAC IPO is Danimer Scientific. New ticker is DN. MR. The company's CEO, Stephen Crossbury, joins us now um, to talk about the business and, and sort of the process of going public here. Stephen, I'd love to just begin the conversation with the SPAC itself um, and, and choosing to come public through this route um, and, you know, kind of how it all played out. And, and if you're pleased, I guess, with the, with the end result for um, where the business stands today, where its capital position is and, and how you hope that'll fuel growth in the years ahead. Sure, Miles. Uh, well, first, I'll say we're very pleased. Uh, I'll kind of give you the background is our company uh, was f funded over 15 years ago by small business people and farmers in southwest rural Georgia. And uh, those folks have, uh, you know, stuck with the company all these years and, and you know, helped us get this far. And as we grew, uh, we were very uh, conscious not to uh, over dilute those shareholders. So, we were financing the company in stages as we grew. Um, in 2018, we bought a used fermentation facility in Kentucky, and we started bringing the first third of that online. Uh, in, in March, uh, we launched the Holy Grail of Plastic uh, two days before the COVID shutdown. So our plan had been to get some financing to uh, start you know, phase two of that project to bring on the final two thirds of, of capacity uh, shortly after that. But obviously, COVID kind of upset the apple cart there. And, uh, you know, it was a, a setback in terms of our financing plans at that time. So we started looking around and uh, we needed, you know, to find a partner because we had over $200 million of take or pay off take agreements. And we had customers like PepsiCo, Nestle, Bacardi, uh, people, you know, big uh, brand owners like that, that are, uh, you know, forecasting uh, great demand with, you know, for our product. And we needed to get that capacity built. So we found the SPAC route was the kind of the quickest way for us to uh, get the capital on the balance sheet that we needed to execute our business plan. And Stephen, I do want to talk, I do want to ask you about uh, Pepsi here. Uh, they had owned 6% of the company, 6% stake. You have worked with them for 11 years. Um, are how long before all of their soda bottles and bags uh, within the, the Tostitos business, for example, or the snacks business, are made from your products. And are, is PepsiCo the only company of your kind they are working with? Uh, first of all, uh, Pe Pepsi owned 6% uh, uh, when we were privately held. So that's been diluted now by, by the uh, public offering. Um, Pepsi has um, made an, uh, a, an announcement that by 2025, they want to convert all of their snack food packaging to uh, biodegradable, recyclable, or compostable materials. So, uh, you know, that's what we're focused on to try to be there to meet that uh, need. And, and, you know, we've been working closely with them uh, to be able to accomplish that. Uh, and are you also working with Dunkin' Brands? Do you have straws in their stores now? Um, well, uh, officially, I, I don't think, I think the answer is no. Uh, we, but Duncan has uh, put a, a press release or, or a, a story on their website that shows uh, that they are testing PHA straws. And the straw that they uh, have a picture of looks uh, a lot like uh, Wincup's uh, Fade Straw. Wincup is one of our you know, contracted uh, partners who's, who's making the marine degradable uh, straws that are, are blue. And, and uh, that, so we, we assume that's our straw. Stephen, um, I want to ask you more broadly because, you know, we all have a lot of plastic still in our homes, don't we? And so yes. I'm just wondering, <laughs> I'm just wondering, big picture, how close you think we are to a plasticless future or really making a significant progress in decreasing the amount of, you know, pl plastic that doesn't degrade sure. um, in our society. Sure. Well, you know, the technology is here now, and we're commercial with it. Um, our plastic uh, degrades even in the ocean, in, in, in the, you know, the most difficult environment to get a, a biopolymer to degrade because there's the least amount of bacteria, and our, our product will, will biodegrade there. 
as far as how close, you know, to, you know, th this is a revolutionary disruptive product. How close are we to, to that being the future? You know, it's going to take a while because uh, of the, there's about 800 billion pounds of plastic made uh, e every year. And uh, we think biopolymers can replace about 500 billion of those pounds. And so, you know, it's going to take a while for the industry to put in that kind of capacity, um, you know, to, to kind of make a dent in, in that number. But uh, the, the awesome thing is that it's, it's here now. It's available. Tim, I do want to ask you also too about your, your institutional uh, shareholders. You know, you have at Live Oak, the company that you merge with, uh, you have former uh, FBR uh, CEO on there, Friedman Billings Ramsey. He leads that, uh, th that Live Oak business. And you also have Gary Wunderlich, uh, who sold his business to FBR, if I have it correct. What type of investors are, are holding your stock right now? Have those two folks been able to attract the institutional shareholder base that will be in your business for the long term? Yes, that's that's what we we believe that the, the investors that we have are are you know solid long investors and uh, we hope to you know be partner with them for years to come. 